This video serves as a quick start guide to IDERA's DB Optimizer. Now, DB Optimizer is a tool to find and fix all the poorly performing SQL within your database. And we're going to review those key functionalities. Now, when you first launch the product, you'll be presented with three choices on this welcome screen. This welcome screen will only come up once the first time you launch the tool so that you know that you have the overview and tutorials. When you launch it in the future, it will just go straight to the workbench. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go over and do some work. Now here you can see that I have a data source explorer and a SQL project explorer. We will come back later and cover this tab. The data source explorer is simple. In order to find and fix SQL, I have to connect to a database. It's very easy to do. I just connect or right hand mouse on that data source and say create a new connection. And then I get my choice of DB2, SQL Server, Oracle, or Sybase. I'll do SQL Server here. And I'm going to say that this is a test kind of database. The coloration helps me to know where I'm at so I don't do something in production by accident. I'm going to hit Next. And it's going to ask me for some typical information. Local host, default 1433. I'm just going to have it uh, connect. I have a database called TPCH. And I just use my Windows authentication. It's always a good idea to test your connection before you commit it. It worked. Now I have a local connection and there's my TPCH database and SQL Server. And notice I can browse and look around, but this is really not where you're going to do the work. So let me disconnect from SQL Server. And now instead I'm going to connect to my Oracle database. I'm doing that because I've already got some examples built that I want to show you. Now, normally when you launch this product and you've got a connection, you need to capture some kind of workload out of environment and see what SQL do I have out there and what SQL is performing poorly. Now, what we do is we will create a profiling session. When I choose this button, it launches a window over here on the right hand side and it will be a time scale along the bottom and what we will see is what activity is going on in the database so if there's anything happening in the database we will see this graph start to fill in and make a chart i will also see what sql statements what events and what sessions now that can take a little while so i want to go to a screen that i already had I'm not going to save it. Now I'm going to go over to the SQL Project Explorer. And under my SQL Project, I can see, aha, there's something called uh, TPCH for Sessions OAR. This is for when I have recorded a workload. So this is the optimizer capture of a workload. And you'll see when I double click on that, now you see what that graph looks like now that it's been filled in. I ran a TPCH industry standard data warehousing benchmark against this database. I was running four users all running the same benchmark concurrently. And this is the activity that I see on my database. And you can see that my direct path read or the blue portions here corresponds to almost all the activity. And I've got all the SQL statements that occurred and also tied to the session ID. So I know not just that the SQL had run, but what session ID it ran within. I also see my events, and I see a list of my sessions out there, including my background processes. Now, if I go to the SQL view instead, then I'll just see the SQL, and I will see the same kind of activity uh, with more detail. If I go to the events, again, oh, direct path read, look at that. It tells me exactly what the problem is when I mouse over it. Namely, you know, I'm uh, doing a lot of asynchronous I.O. here or, or, you know, could be. Then I can go look at my sessions and so on. Now, let's say that I picked a particular SQL statement and did a right hand mouse on it and said tune. In other words, I'm asking the tool. There's a particular SQL statement that I'm trying to make better. 
Maybe it is uh, this first one here. Oops. Well, I clicked on it, so it shows up in the bottom to give me profile details. So I can either click on it here and say tune, or I can click on it in the details and say tune. Either way, when I do, what will come up is a new window, and it will have that query in it, and it will have information that you can look at for that query. So let's just go in, uh, in order with these. So the first one I have is a customer query. Now, when you come into this screen, the query will be here in the top, but there will be nothing in the bottom portion. What will happen is you're going to want to tell the tool to generate some test cases. These are your test cases to uh, perform a detailed analysis and how many times you want to execute each statement. Now, if you execute a statement only once, then if it's in memory, that could skew your results. You may want to run it multiple times to get the best result. For expediency, I'm going to keep it short here. Once I've done all of this, I come and I look and I say, okay, well, let's run this. And it's going to fill in the details underneath of here. So I'm going to find out the time, the reads, and the CPU time for all of those options that were available. Now, this takes a little bit of time, and you can see it's doing the work. It's figuring out what there is. It came up with all of these different ways to rewrite the query. And now it's going out, and you can see here it's executing this first example. And look at that. It ran in less than half the time that the original. Now, that's clock time. But it also used about the same amount of CPU time. I saved a little, but not a lot. And it's this running that much faster that's really nice. And notice what it says here, pre-compute subquery. I'm going to stop this. I just want to show you the query. So I right-hand mouse on it and I say edit. And if you look at this query, there is a subquery in it that really probably should have been moved out as a with clause uh, leading on the select statement. So it's only executed once. Now the tool recognized that and it said, you know what? I can give a hint or an optimizer hint to do a pre-compute on the subquery. That tells the optimizer, pre-compute the subquery once and then use that for all the iterations of the outer loop. And look at the savings there. Now, this was the overview page, and I, I stopped it, so I didn't let it fill in all the choices because I had a clear winner, and I was happy with that. If I go to the analysis tab, what's nice here is, first of all, we have this visual tuning diagram. Now, if I click on a table, you can see it got highlighted over here in the SQL. That doesn't look too sophisticated, but watch what happens when I click on the subquery. There it is. It highlights the subquery for me, so I can concentrate on looking at just pieces. Now, what's interesting is it gives us index analysis. Now, if the indexes are blue, this index could have been used by the optimizer, but it wasn't because the optimizer decided there was something better to use. If it's green, then the optimizer actually used that index. Now, there's two other colors of interest. If it had been gray, that would have meant this is an index that cannot be used by the optimizer maybe it's on a column that's not used anywhere within the SQL statement. Um, likewise, if the column were instead orange, orange would appear up here to top as the first choice. Orange means, hey, I looked at this query, and if you only had this index or these indexes here that I'm suggesting, everything would run much faster. And then you can right-hand mouse on that index and say, well, fine, make that index and let me see the results. So let's do another query. Here I have a select statement. And if we look at it, this one's a lot easier. It doesn't have any subqueries. Uh, it's a multi-table join. So let's do the same thing. Let's tell it to run and find us a winner. Now, again, this takes a little bit of time and it chose these choices and you can see it's running them. Here's one that looks like it's going to run slightly better. So let's say that uh, using the hash to do the join, 
uh, it reduced the amount of clock time a little bit, and it still used about the same amount of CPU time. So it made it no worse from CPU consumption. It was a little bit better maybe on the I.O., and it was a little bit better maybe on the elapsed time. But let's go over and look at the analysis. In other words, you could say, well, gee, it didn't find anything for me that's really great. Okay, let's go over to the analysis. Aha, look now. We've got the indexes that could have been used. There are no green. This query did not use any indexes. That's not good. And here is orange, and that's the suggested index. Now, if I click on that guy, it will tell me, hey, your customer table had a full table scan, and so maybe this index would have been better. Or, let's go look at this line item one, same thing. Line item happens to be the largest table in my database, so that's probably a good bet. And if I come here and say collect indexes, then what it will do is it will create the index, and then I can go back and I can rerun it and find out the new results. Uh, and, and with that index, it would have been much better. So let's do a third and final query. This is particularly on the line item table. We're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to run this, and we want to see what options it comes up with. Now, this query is fairly complicated, but what's important is as your queries grow, both in terms of the number of lines and the amount of complexity, there are more and more options that may have to be reviewed. Now, you may think to yourself, oh my gosh, I don't want 10,000 choices to come up. And so we do have preferences that you could choose to control that. So under SQL development, ah, there's a SQL tuning job editor, and there we go, case generation. And look, all the legal options that are available for your database are in here, and you can see I've turned a lot of them off. For example, I know that on this notebook, I only have one disk, so turning on parallel is probably going to overwhelm the disk, so there's no reason for me to do that. Now, in your environment, that may be different. So we come back here, and again, we noticed, well, maybe it found something that's a little better. Use a little bit less CPU, used a little bit less uh, on the clock time. I'm going to go ahead and stop this one again because it is a pretty long query. Now, this is an interesting one because now, look, there's multiple nested subqueries. Now, this is getting really useful. If I go here, it shows me this exists. That is one subquery. And if I go here, it shows me that exists, which is a different subquery. And again, here are the indexes that could have been used but weren't. There are no green. There's no gray, no indexes that were you know, unusable, just ones that could have been used and weren't chosen. None that were green or chosen. And again, we come back to these orange indexes, which is, hey, you should have put an index on this guy because, look, this particular subselect is on the line item table. So not only do you have maybe the join with the line item table, but you also have a subselect on that table, and there's no indexes being used, and that's your largest table in your database. So these are things that help you to find quickly. It might not have been easy to find that subquery unless I got it focused like this, and I could look and I'd say, okay, I see why it's making that recommendation. So this diagram helps you to navigate the syntax much easier. Now, that was under the SQL Project Editor. Now, I could have uh, created additional folders. In other words, I called this General SQL. I could have created different projects. Let me go and show you what I mean by that. So, let's go back to all of our sessions and let's pick a query. Just going to pick one at random. Going to say, let's tune it. Notice that it's an untitled tuning job, and it's not over here in my tree. So let me just say to save it. I don't want to run it. I just want to show you. And the first thing it's going to say is, well, where do you want to hang this? Well, I'm going to put it under my SQL project right there because that's the project I have. I can create multiple projects. Maybe this is the accounting project, and over here is the payroll project. So you can create projects and sub-projects within projects. I'll just say to use the one I've got there, 
and then I'm going to give it a name. This was demo. And when I say finish here, now you will see that demo, that tuning session is there. And the reason that's important is if I were to shut down the tool and come back in, I would have demo available and ready to use, and I could look at it again. And you say, well, why would that be useful? What if you find that you need to create these indexes and your DBA says, but we can't do it right now. We're going to do it tomorrow. Well, you can leave this tool. You don't have to leave it up and running. You can shut it down. You've saved that tuning session. When the DBA comes back, it tells you, okay, that index is there now because maybe uh, they don't want you to use this tool to generate the indexes because you're in a controlled environment. Then you can come back and reopen this tuning session and you can then run it to see what the results are of having the new index. So with all of that said, I want to thank you and I hope that you uh, enjoyed the quick intro to this tool. If you're interested, uh, download a trial from our website and obviously if you want to purchase, contact our sales reps. Thank you.